Welcome back everybody to Matt Sales. I'm Matt Tizard and I'm here to talk to you today about how to prepare your CV when entering the sales and business development job market. Firstly, a quick disclaimer. Um, I actually think it, the year is 2022 and, and I think CVs will slowly but surely be phased out of business. It's something that we've done now for years and years and years, right? We write about our experience, we write about our interests, our hobbies, um, it's always the jib. Um, and we actually talk a little bit about, you know, ourselves on a two or three page document. I would encourage anyone watching this video to take a gamble and don't write a CV. What I would suggest is creating a website, maybe doing a video vlog like this about yourself, attaching a LinkedIn profile with some clickable links to a website or a web page or a blog, I think will be far more powerful and will help you land a job opportunity. Ultimately, a CV is a demonstration of your portfolio. And if you can use things like, you know, WordPress, um, things like uh, Wix to create, you know, a visual powerful um, sales pitch of yourself, I think that's got opportunity to land better in the market than the CV. However, what I would say, and having been through a recruitment process myself in the last couple of years, um, certainly from a HR perspective, CVs are very much needed in the market. They're currently in demand. So let's get into this video and talk about how you should prepare your CV when going into the sales job market. I'll start with the basic structure. There's a lot of debate online about how many pages should be in a CV. For me, I'll go straight out and say I have a three page policy. I think anything after there, becomes an absolute slog to read. And ultimately, when hiring managers pick up the job, they look at your first couple of roles, they look at your qualifications. It's very rare to find hiring managers really dig deep into every single point, unless they are attracted to your CV from the outset. To kind of put into perspective how you're gonna get down to three pages, I'm gonna give you a quick hack. Firstly, I see people write at the beginning of their um, CV, you know, I'm a proactive, ambitious business development manager with five years experience working in the, right, whatever. Let's move that to the cover letter and give us a little bit more space because what we're gonna attach always is a CV and a cover letter. And by pretty much duplicating both of them two things, we're wasting space. So let's move that into the cover letter. Let's begin the CV and structurally, it's quite straightforward. Contact details, experience, education and qualification, and then hobbies and interest. That is the simple way, those clear, bold headlines, and then build your CV from there. As we talk about our most recent role, we're always gonna attach the dates that we worked there, what our position was, and we're gonna talk about responsibilities. Now, a way you can differentiate from your competition is to actually talk about your achievements in a role and go one step further and attach numbers because numbers stand out when a hiring manager, when a sales director, a chief revenue officer, when they're looking at your CV, numbers are gonna stand out. I was 125% over target in the year 2020. I grew our new business accounts by 55% in Q4. I landed seven deals in Q3 of approximate value, 400,000 pounds, dollars or euros. Every BDM that applies for the role you're going for is gonna have very similar responsibilities. What can stand out is the achievements. And I know from experience those numbers can really stand out and help you obtain that interview. Somewhere where there is always space um, for on the CV is for references and referrals. So if you have any people that you know a hiring manager or a HR are happy to contact, be sure to attach them to your CV. You can also link to your LinkedIn page, which hopefully will have a number of references and referrals from previous clients, previous colleagues, etc. So be sure to attach those links to your CV. A word of warning though, if you are attaching your LinkedIn profile, make sure the dates and the jobs that you've worked match that of your CV. Next, I wanna talk about the language. Now, it's very easy to talk about CVs and see them as a very formal document, because they are. But what I want you to do is to really try and get your personality and tonality across in some of those achievements and in some of those responsibilities. If you are somebody that is really hungry, really driven, you know, constantly going towards targets, bang, 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 day after day, add your responsibilities and add your achievements about your own self lead gen, about projects you've got involved in that's driven new business and write tenaciously about how you went and achieved, and achieved that. If you've got a really good um, achievement that you're writing about in your CV, 
Ask yourself why three times. Why am I adding that achievement? Why do I think it would be important? Why will it add value to my CV? And build into the picture of your CV how you went about obtaining that. So I talked in a previous, into a previous video about interviewing and using P, point evidence explanation. You can do the same in your achievements and responsibilities. Point, I increased sales in 2020 by 50%. Evidence. I did this by approaching new businesses in a sector that we identified as a growth opportunity. Explanation. I did this by reverse engineering our current close rate. I knew if I sent 500 emails a month, I'd get roughly 50 responses and from then I'd get about 10 meetings and I'd close five of them. So I knew if I did 500 emails per month, I would be bang on target. Final, final point I just want to make about CV development is thinking about tailoring each CV to the role that you're applying for. So if you've got a dual skill set and you've worked in sales, you've worked in account management, it's really about putting the right achievements and the right responsibilities into each of your job roles to mirror what the hiring manager is looking for. If you had a role that was out and out account management, um, you know, 75% of the time, but 25% of the time you were dedicating your time to business development and the role you're applying for is in the BD space, be sure to mention that. And what I see is I see people grab a CV, make a really generic one and just fire it out across the market, seeing what sticks. Now there's a time and a place for cold emailing and cold calling, but when it comes to applying for jobs, that really isn't the time for it. You have got it all in your fingertips, how bespoke and how um, precise your CV is to the job that you're applying for. So for each role, Please make sure that you type down some of the responsibilities, some of the industries that the company you're applying for operates in, and make sure as applicably as possible, you are relating your experience, your achievements, and some of the roles that you've done to that job description. And that's it really. That is just a really basic structure and some quick tips on how to prepare your CV when you're entering the job market, particularly when it comes to sales and business development. I've attached it the be below on this um, video uh, links to mattsales.co.uk where you will find a free template that you can use to create your CV, which I've made myself. Um, please feel free to download and use that. If you want any advice or guidance, you can comment or feel free to drop me an email personally. I'd be more than happy to help. Um, it's matt at mattsales.co.uk. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. I hope this helps you obtain some uh, interview requests and I'll see you in the next video.